Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Todd Talk, because when Todd talks, people listen. Hopefully. So it is episode 20 here on Todd Talk. Very excited. And we are going to be doing the Death Battle Reaction to Agent Carolina versus the Meta. Uh, some notes before we start. First of all, yes, I am now significantly uglier because my hair is gone. I apologize. I had to get a cut. Life happens. Second of all, I, after watching this video and catching up on Red vs. Blue Season 14, I realized the mistake I made in my assumption of the death battle. Um, season 14, for some reason, is not a continuation, per se, of Season 13, but a amalgamation of stories and various styles in the Red vs. Blue universe, which explains how this death battle could be in canon while not being in canon. So I apologize for that. I thought it was based on what I heard from uh, Wiz and Boomstick, uh, a continuation of season 14, or even the premiere of season 14. I didn't know that season 14 was actually there. Uh, so there you go. That being said, I was still right. Agent Carolina for the win. And I probably would have still picked Carolina if I knew this was an out of continuity battle. Uh, I really did like how they combined the uh, death battle and Red vs. Blue universes together, including the confirmation that Boomstick is uh, Sarge's son. That was, uh, <laughs> that was really, I'm sorry, that was just really funny because there was clear, there, there, it didn't have to happen, but because of how Boomstick has been played over the years, and you know how Sarge has been played over the years, it really did make sense that he would be his son and everything. So, you know, hey, happy fusions and all that. Uh, also, I loved how it was truly a battle of, or a, uh, a combination of what would happen in a battle mixed with, okay, let's tell you what happens in the battle. Because I, I really did love how they kept jumping out of Death Battle and then go into Red versus Blue and right all the way through the match, including right up until the end. And that just really lent itself to why this fusion happened. Because if they just did a straight up Death Battle with the Red versus Blue characters, it wouldn't have made any sense. But because they had the Red versus Blue characters there, basically inciting the battle and uh, reacting to, like, you know, the weapons test, you know, them killing Grip a thousand times, and then uh, oh, the reveal of how Texas is actually Agent Caroline's mother. You know, that huge reaction was very funny. Uh, you know, props for that. I was like, oh, what? you guys didn't know that? You gotta pay attention here. Or, or like, the meta moment of, uh, hey, how do you get all this footage? Are you watching us? Don't worry about that. <laughs> You know, that was just, you know, these guys like to have fun. I mean, it, these are two teams with the uh, Rooster Teeth and Screw Attack that, above all else, they're just there to be fans and have fun. And so to make this video be intentionally two different continuities uh, via the two different shows is just fun. And so I understand why they did it now, and I applaud what they did. Uh, as for the battle, it was good. I mean, I, had a, I have a friend who hasn't watched Red vs. Blue in a while, so he he didn't feel invested because he didn't know the characters as well as he should have. And obviously, you know, you run this risk with Death Battle. If you don't play these games or you don't watch these shows, you're always going to... You're going to eventually find a character that you're not invested in. I, I didn't know Guts when he fought Nightmare, and I, I knew Nightmare for Soul Calibur. I didn't know Sweet Tooth that well outside of uh, some references to Twisted Metal. Um, and so if you don't watch Red vs. Blue, you really don't have someone to root for here outside of, you know, what you see in the, the you know, the few minute previews. And I understand that. So this isn't the best battle for someone who, A, doesn't know the Red vs. Blue universe, which I understand if you don't, or it just comes here for, you know, a legendary battle because these characters that they have are technically a few years old, you know, they're not, they don't have the status or I guess, even cult status of certain other Death Battle characters. So, this isn't a battle for everyone, but if you did know anything about them, or even just, you know, you're catching up on Red vs. Blue now, you probably enjoy this battle a lot. It was important that they got all the voice actors back, and they got Carolina, and they got Wash, or sorry, uh, they got a Church, and obviously a Griff Simmons and Caboose. And Sarge, you know, that was really fun. And it really lent itself to the authenticity of the battle more than anything else. 
you could argue this is one of the most accurate death battles ever just because they had the whole cast there, more or less. Uh, you know, how they uh, interpreted the battle scenes. You know, they were on the Mother of Invention, which was the freelancer base for a long time. Uh, they showed Caroline doing the martial arts training, which was a big part of the storyline in uh, one of the seasons. And even just how they fought, you know, like the banter between uh, Carolina and Church, the meta and his uh, AIs. Uh, it was it was really fun. I, I did notice some weird wonkiness to the animations. Maybe I just didn't notice it before with like the walk sequence of the meta as he like that that felt kind of odd, but everything else felt really, really good. And although I'm, I'm sure some people may not understand the ending of Church, you know, distracting the meta. I actually liked it because it was a callback to how the meta was actually defeated in the Red vs. Blue universe. And it made perfect sense that he would strike the, the meta and it would work. Uh, I'm actually a little surprised they didn't mention that because that was also a key part of the meta's character as it wanted to get every AI it could. And obviously Epsilon was one of the missing AI fragments that the meta didn't have. So I'm a little disappointed they didn't mention that, but hey, whatever. Uh... It was just a nice little fun battle. You know, it was very beautiful. I love the 3D battles when they're done right. You know, I don't, I actually can't think of one that I don't think wasn't done right. You get like, a, you get a mixing of styles, but because this was pure red versus blue, you had all the looks, all the glamour, all the effects uh, to make it shine. And it really did. So I'm really happy. And I'm happy, of course, that Carolina won. It made sense that she won. I loved the reasoning behind why she won because, you know, like Griff said, you know, the meta is stronger, and he is, and he has all the armor enhancements, and he does, but he doesn't know how to control them as well as Carolina does, because Carolina has Church, who is a singular AI, versus the meta, who has all those AIs all talking in his head, because it's, as they showed in the show, you know, multiple AIs in one person doesn't work. That's why Carolina almost went crazy, was because she had Ada, Ada and Iota in her brain and all the two voices mixing with her own just drove her crazy for a little bit. And then uh, when she, and then when the meta kept getting more and more AIs, yes, he got more powerful, but it was also, you know, he was very unintelligible. He didn't say a word, you know, he would growl because he couldn't speak period, but then none of the AI spoke for him also. So it really did make sense. And even calling back to the leaderboard, you know, strength isn't everything, you know, Carolina is a more skilled fighter. She's faster. And because she only has a certain number of armor enhancements all controlled by Church, she wouldn't drain the uh, power from her suit as quickly as the meta did, which was shown in the show as well. So I, it was a very good match. It was a very... Um, it was very much for the fans. I mean, for the fans who've watched Red vs. Blue, this was something for you. And it's very cool. Now, I, that being said, I still want... A true continuation of the Red versus Blue story eventually. Rooster Teeth, help me out here. But, you know, I'll give them time because I know they're doing good stuff and I look forward to the next one. Uh, I was actually, the one of the biggest surprises for me was that they actually fully revealed who is going to be the next death battle. I don't know if they just wanted to do it or they're just tired of the fragmented previews, but we are getting uh, Cammy White from Street Fighter versus uh, Sonya Blade for Mortal Kombat, which I'm sure is going to be dubbed the Battle of the Blonde Bombshells. Uh, and uh, that's very intriguing. I They showed a small preview on uh, the uh, YouTube channel for Death Battle or Screw Attack, and uh, it's going to be a 2D fight. I'm going to reserve judgment on the looks until I see it in full, but this is going to be interesting. It, it, it harkens back to the classic uh, Street Fighter Mortal Kombat rivalry that really kick-started... Uh, uh, death battle, so it's it's good to see them doing it, and it's good to see an all-female matchup again, so that's pretty cool. So, uh, look for my preview on that later. I uh, definitely want to see watch the, both the previews, because I'll admit I only have limited experience with both. I think I have more with Sony than Cami, so I definitely want to check out her preview. So, stay tuned for that, and we'll go from there. So, with that, I will end this episode of Todd Talk. Be sure to tell me what you thought of Agent Carolina versus the Meta. And let's discuss whether you thought it was right, what you think of Red vs. Blue or Red vs. Blue Season 14. And let's just have fun, because that's what this is all about, ladies and gentlemen. 
So I thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I know you were listening and I will see you around.